So good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Hrib Vyshlinsky, and I'm the executive, executive director of the Center for Economic Strategy. And we are today having our monthly webinar on the overall economy review in March 2023. So basically, we're continuing our monthly events, the events that we have been conducting since the full-scale invasion of Russia to Ukraine, and we're continuing to work with these reviews just to understand how Ukrainian economy and how sectors of Ukrainian economy feel themselves during the full-scale war. And in order to help our partners and for all of us to understand what is it that is going on, and we're going to start with the overview of the main trends for the passing months and a special topic that we would like to highlight. This week, we would like to discuss the transformation of the um, IT sector. There wasn't once that we have discussed what kind of things going on in this economy sector. So we have spoken uh, that there's everything more or less sustainable in the IT sector. They have the export income and it's the most resilient sector. But then when the shelling of the energy infrastructure had took place, then they have some questions coming about that as well. Then later on, we've had the next wave of mobilization coming and there were some additional issues to the IT sector as well coming. So we have started to hear more that the IT sector also has certain challenges for the further on development, even in the conditions when we there is not a lot of physical uh, assets that they have. They're more protected that, for example, the metallurgic sector that can be devastated or the agriculture, we're understanding that the fields can be mined. But today we wanted to have more attention to the IT sector, and thus today we have the new partner that we are doing it together with. We have the media partner for today's event. We have the Aspeca Media. That's an online publication on technology, entrepreneurship, and the IT news. But of course, our constant partner is the German economic team. And together with the German economic team, we are conducting our monthly discussions for more than a year now. I just wanted to remind you, as always, that you can pose all the questions that you would like to have for our speakers to answer. You can pose in the Q&A sections and in the chats, and we as well have the interpretation from Ukrainian to English, and you can also choose it at the lower panel of your Zoom, uh, the Zoom uh, uh, screen. I would like to pass the floor to Gary Bloschkin, who is the project manager of the German economic team. So, Gary, please, I would like to invite you to take the floor. Thank you very much. Warm welcome from Berlin to all participants of this webinar on today's presentation of the monthly economic review for Ukraine's economy prepared by the Center for Economic Strategy. It's a great pleasure for me as project manager for Ukraine of the German economic team to introduce this webinar as part of the continuous strong cooperation between the Center for Economic Strategy and the German economic team. The German economic team is an economic policy advisory project financed by, by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action and has been active in Ukraine in advising the Ukrainian government and state in institutions for more than 15 years. I'm very glad uh, to see that so many interested listeners and participants uh, will take part in this today's event and can bring as this event can bring in touch stakeholders from Ukraine and from abroad to analyze and improve the economic, financial, and social situation of Ukraine facing Russia's full-scale invasion. This format provides an important opportunity to discuss the state of the economy, which is a regular part of this event series, as well as today's topic, the, the IT sector and its development. The IT sector has been revealing its great progress in supporting the digitalization of the banking sector that keeps providing services and communication during the current challenging war times, as well as uh, e to the e-governance sector. I'm very delighted that the Center for Economic Strategy has put this topic to today's agenda and invited such high-ranking policymakers and experts. 
Warm welcome to Deputy Minister Bonyakov, Mr. Mitish, Mr. Prokofiev, Mr. Skripnik, and Ms. Shapoval. I'm very looking forward to a fruitful discussion and giving back the floor to Maria and Lieb, who will host the, today's event. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. And uh, as of now, I would like to pass the floor to my colleagues just to make this a very brief 20 minute overview of the situation in Ukrainian economy throughout the passing months. What have we seen? What are the new trends that we have seen? What the trends that have already ceased? So I would like to pass the floor to the Matro Hudina, who's going to start our today's presentation. And we cannot hear you, we cannot see you, we can barely see the presentation. No, we can't see you and can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can now hear you, but we still cannot see you, but we'll still the presentation. Let's just, let's, let's just start. We, okay, you can see the presentation. Yes, we can see the presentation, so and we can hear you. Okay, dear colleagues, um, hello. And we're going to start our monthly review. We're going to start with our military situation updates. And I think that's most of you, you know, that's right now uh, we see there's no changes to either of sides, but basically that's that means that the Russian attacks, they're seasoned to be effective, they're becoming not that frequent and they're weaker than they used to be. And everybody now understands that as the new weapon comes, as the new weapons comes, especially the hard weapons, we've had uh, the German tanks, the Leopard 2 banks, and so there are some tryouts to also take some of the new processes and that might the Russian offense might not be that effective. The macroeconomic trends uh, in the recent weeks, uh, some of the institutions, both private and public, they have reviewed the macroeconomical forecast. What is interesting, the most optimistic forecasters, they have decreased, um, decreased, they have taken lower, they have lowered their forecast. The one who have been pessimistic, they have increased and a high and heightened their forecast. So everybody expects that uh, we will have uh, the growth of the GDP in 2023 on the more or less level of zero. So basically, it is mostly connected to the idea that we have increased the forecast that the, the war will be prolonged. Further on, the business optimism has increased for the first time in the last five months and that the survey of the national banks have said that the index of the business activity has increased rapidly up to the maximum level that we've had before the blackouts during the times of the full-scale invasion. And of course, it is connected to the main point that we've had a stable, more or less sustainable situation in the energy sector. We don't have the blackouts, and it also has positive impact towards all of the sectors of economy. Except for the construction, we can see the main indices in the construction sector falling because we do understand that right now we don't have the investment demand, and this sector is mostly working on this kind of demand, and right now that's not the best sector to be working in. Speaking about the costs of Ukraine and the losses of Ukraine uh, during the war, so we now see that the damage has increased up to $3.5 billion, according to the uh, project, that the calculations of the damages from the Kiev School of Economy, and mostly those growth can be attributed to the losses in the energy sector. So we have now had the evaluation of how much of the energy infrastructure we have lost during the shell shelling of the last months, and we have also added the agriculture and the new category that has been added that hasn't been calculated before, it's the forest. And now you can see that additional additional assets included. So you can see that's a higher figure than the Delta before. And it actually means that we have now our overviewed the other categories as well. Speaking of the sectoral analysis, and I'm going to start with energy, even though 
that the hits on the infrastructure are continued, but they're not that powerful as they used to be before. Uh, because there's, uh, the days get longer, the temperature is rising, so we don't have so many blackouts, the demand on electricity is decreasing slowly. There is a certain bad, bad situation in specific regions, but our today has also shown that our stability has been quite, quite vulnerable because as soon as uh, it is the temperature drum fall and colder so we had the blackouts again and the uh, cutouts too so it like i didn't have the lights for three hours no it's not just about the temperature but it's also about the very strong wind and we had the storming wind and it wasn't really sustainable repairs that have been completed and what we needed just a couple of the wind uh, strong wind blows so uh, something that has been built out and from the other routes that is started to break down. So sorry for intervening. Yes, I just wanted to also say that it actually emphasizes the vulnerability of the current system and the existence of the current system, because we basically understand that we've had some of the moments of the repairment of the infrastructure and some of the substations that are regulating and restoring their activities. The wind and solar stations, they're restoring their work and we're almost not procuring the electricity from other countries like Slovakia and Moldova. And even the Ukrainero, they have announced already that we possibly might even start exporting the energy again. The one that the export that has been stopped when we had the biggest hits, uh, since we have the biggest hits on the energy infrastructure from October last year. Unfortunately, for eight months of the long negotiations, the Agency of uh, Atomic Energy did not approve the idea of creating the demilitarized zone uh, around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. But still, uh, there were a couple of interesting novelties coming from the energy sector as well on continuation of the, follow, of the following development of the module nuclear reactors and small nuclear reactors. So we will be able to build up the sustainability of the sector. We know that it's a not prolonged story, but it means that before that, that we might have in the future the less dependent energy system. The metallurgy, a couple of interesting news has happened here during this period of time. And we have had a couple of the enterprises, they have announced that they're going to restore their work or they're going to be increasing their capacities. Uh, for example, the Metanvest have relaunched the Northern and Ingolesk uh, metal, metal processing plants uh, that have been stopped even before the big blackouts. We know that Zaporizh Stahl had launched their salt furnace and the other enterprises are once again increasing their production lines. The only problem is still with the interpipe steel because they don't have enough of scrap metal to be producing. There's no scrap metal right now in the markets because again, we have decrease in supply of that, but the export has increased. The agriculture, after the very strong negotiations and after the sabotage series from Russia, we have now reached the continuation of the grain deal. It has been now renowned, renewed for the four next months. And that's not what we've expected because the agriculture parties has wanted to have more to have to be reassured that they can continue work. But right now there is a little bit of stability because the first negotiations went around 60 days. but. Right Right now we have 120 days of continuation of the green deal our sewing campaign has started it we will now cover uh three 25 percent less areas than what was before it is going to be compared to indicators of 2022 it's just it's going to be a little bit of different structure of the crops they're going to have more crops who have uh, more profitability per one kilo of weight, because this is an important understanding the logistics limitations that we have. To help the agriculture sector, the cabinet of ministers have restored the 579 loans to farmers. And we know that uh, there's around 20 billion grievances uh, that have been provided as loans in 2023. The Defense Ministry also has continued the demining of the territory. That's the most important thing. Well, demining has been completed throughout this period, but they have now reviewed their approach to the demining process. And what is very important, they have simplified some of the regulation now. Moment of getting into the markets, so there are some international companies who can provide the demining and understanding that there is a lot 
amounts of work on demand in Ukraine, that so will be enough for lots of companies for many years to come. We're not really interested in decreasing the competition in this service. Uh, the spotlight of our today's conversation, the IT sector last year, according to the state statistics services, the exports of the IT services decreased, but it has decreased lesser than the economy overall and the Ukrainian GDP. And we're still talking about the very good figures than we used to have in 2021. Um, it is connected to the world market as well because we're mostly working on the exports and together with the local factors the overall in world expenses on the it sector has decreased slightly because a couple of years before uh, there was some decrease due to the COVID-19. the COVID 19 has now ceased to be several lots of different solutions that wanted to be that have been done so the demand has decreased so maybe for some people who are not aware of this of some of the specifics of the sectors unlike agriculture and infrastructure they were not calculating the physical losses and physical assets so the as an indicator of what is actually happening the it calculates usually the amount of people have still how many people are still be working in the in the sector that's the main asset in Ukraine, unfortunately, well, there has a break of the trend overall. It's not just that the people, amount of people who have been engaged in the IT sector has decreased throughout this year, but uh, there is a number of people who would like to work. It is higher than the amount of the positions that are being offered. There has been some historical records that has been broken as well, but it is the reflection of the international market because we understand that has been the decreases in the IT sectors and the cutouts in the IT sectors all over the world. So the first quarter of year 2023, there was like almost almost 154,000 layoffs all over the world. And you might have seen there's a dozens of thousands of people have been laid off in Microsoft, in Google, and in other big companies. But I'm not going to take the topic for the conversation from my colleagues. I will give you more um, details on this sector. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dmitry. And I will pass the floor to Maxim Samoluk, uh, one hour professional in economy, who's going to tell us more about what's happening with the budget. Yes, thank you. And I think we can continue our discussion with the fiscal sector. And I think we can start with analyzing with the statistics what we have for the income of the state budget. Yes. I uh, think that you're not sharing your presentation properly uh, because I think that you're just sharing the screen but not the presentation. The slides are not moving and we So it looks like the problem is still there. And like if I'm going to do that, like, yes, if you're going to let, let us not spend the time, let us, I will just leave it as it is. So in February, the revenues of the state budget have increased compared to the previous months. First of all, because we had a slight increase of the incomes from the uh, VAT, from the import VAT, but in the same time, the domestic VAT has been the lowest as seen in the recent eight months. But still, you can see that the overall um, there's always been that there was been the difference with compensating the VAT, so we had the growth of the revenues overall. There's also been the subsoil payments from the, were the lowest as well, but we have seen a quite good excise payments and the CPT revenues that was quite good as well. So this is the statistic that we currently have. This is the statistic that we have as available right now. Speaking about um, 
March, Ukraine has already received 1.5 euro or 1.6 billion US dollars of foreign financing. That is the loan from the European Union. The overall amount of the financial financial assistance from our foreign partners as of 24th of March is 7.9 billion dollars already. On the 21st of March, Ukraine and the IMF has agreed that they're going to continue working on the new program between Ukraine and IMF, and uh, we're going to have the program of financial support of over all 15.6 billion dollars and FT also speaks that uh, we're going to receive uh, some of this money in 2023 but we had to not have the official uh, schedule for all of this money to be received Canada has also has had uh, 1.8 billion dollars of the new loan for Ukraine that's going to be also included into the budget for this year and that is very important as we have quite significant gap between what it is that is needed and what are the money that we're about to receive this year. As of now, with the increase of the budget that we have seen on the 21st of March, and this, uh, our parliament has increased budget for almost 1.3 trillion grievances, and most of this money is going to be used for the financial support for the Ukrainian army, uh, the parliament presupposes that most of this money is going to be covered by the budget deficiency, but it means that also the need for the budget for continuing paying the loans is going to increase up to 58 billion dollars but as of now counting in the money that we have already received and counting the money that we're about to receive that were promised we have the 34 billion dollars of the financial support that has been increased for this year's the other part of the money almost 20 billion dollars can be covered by the additional issuing of the ukrainian military obligation of domestic bonds and if it's going to be issued with uh, the same in the same pace that has been done before and we understand that it will help us to cover at least 10 billion dollars but but we still will need additional 10 billion dollars that we need to find more and understanding this the loan that canada is ready to provide might be very useful uh, possibly ukraine is going to receive financial support from other partners for example from norway from japan that has promised certain amounts of money as well but we don't have the official information of whether we will receive this money this year or not but the, we have the problem with the financial support and that's a very significant problem for all of us and we need to find the best solution for it and the only thing that we can hope for is the support of our western partners who should help us to finance the gap that we have had, uh, the gap that we have had not due to our blames, but due to the problems with Russia, because we need to support our army. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you, Maxim. And I think that's the final part for our macroeconomical uh, review. Maria Tomilna, our um, macroeconomist professional. So we would like to know what is going on with the money and financial sector. Yes, uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you can see the screen and presentation well. And first of all, we're going to start with the main our uh, key rates. So the overall key, key rate is on the level 25%. And after the next session of the National Bank, according to the current plans, the regulator is not going to change the key rates at least till the end of the first quarter of 2024. And however, there is also the assumptions that uh, the key rate can be decreased if there's going to be um, the decrease of inflation and if there's going to be the overall preservation of the financial support from international partners on the same level. Uh, the same, the military bonds is at the same level, 18.5%. Um, the average rates on retail deposits that continue to increase slowly. And as of this 21st of March, they're on the level 13.5% in the annual deposits and 205 for monthly deposit rates. This increase of the rates has been connected to the increase that we have seen in February and March for our main funds. 
uh, and for the mandatory reserves are for both by the natural persons and legal entities. In February, the inflation dropped to 24.9%, which is also um, connected to the good uh, demand on fuels and pro foods, and also by the forcing of the position of Rovnia in the international markets. Um, and we've also had at the end of the mission financial support from National Bank of Ukraine. All of it has meant that there's going to be the increase of the and improvement of the expectations. If we will analyze the banking sector in more details, then we can see that the volume of the household's deposits continues to increase, and we can see that most of the increase has been shown on the long-term deposits in uh, the international currency. That is the three months deposit that gives the customers the opportunity to buy dollars that rate that is lower than the low that the rate on the cash market. The deposits in Hrivnia, they increase, they show the slow in increase. The key reason for that is the low rates for these deposits and they do not make the deposits very attractive. Uh, the problems is a problems in this. And uh, there was a session on the 15th of March and the Monetary Policy Committee had has also asked for some actions to do some administrative measures to increase um, the key rates for the deposits in the main banks, which are the private banks and Ocean Bank. Also, the overall situation with the loans is as follows. So the overall, the loans that continue to decrease, there are still more, more risks present and those loans cannot be provided without the insurance on the war risks provided. Speaking about the liquidity of the banking systems, then we see that we're starting to increase um, the liquidity due to the higher speed than it was in 2022. And there is uh, the considerable increase in spending and due to the free liquidity, the NBA, the National Bank of Ukraine has increased the mandatory reserve requirements since May February, and it's also enabled the banks to meet up the 50% of their required reserves with the benchmark funds. So right now, this reserve, this, the results of this activities hasn't been significant because the liquidity in the banking sector continue to grow. But this, that we see that this jump has been lower than in January and February. But the main problem for the increase of the liquidity is the the problems with the fiscal system, and also up till the third weeks of month, the average daily volume of the deposit certificates has decreased by 72 billion grivnas, and the average daily volume of corresponding accounts has increased only by 29 billion. And just to end that up, I just wanted to uh, give you the overview of our foreign exchange policy. It's still been uh, on the fixed level and basically on the our state market, it has has a different situation. Agrivnia has strengthened its position, but from the side of the National Bank of Ukraine, there's a need for additional cash interventions. And as the consequence of that, our international reserves have decreased by 3.5% in February, and they're reaching the level of 28.9 US dollars, billion US dollars. They're still on the no good level because they cover 3.7 months of the future emperors, which is more than acceptable level of three months. In the same time, the national banks has provided the opportunity for the international investors who have bought the domestic bonds to have additional percentage starting from the 1st of April, which encouraged the, the residents to invest more attractively in Ukrainian bonds. And this also gives us the understanding that MBU has the confidence in the possibility of the partially easing the capital movement of the, the capital movement restrictions. That's all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Maria. So right now we're going to have a very interesting and unusual innovation in organizing our monthly events because we actually have a new media partner with our special our media partner today for this very event and uh, we have the spark media today working with us so the it part is going to be moderated by our guest and is going to be uh, moderated by Katarina Mvenjak, who is the CEO of Spec Media, who actually knows better what's going on in the IT sector. You know, I'm uh, just trying to find the best way in IT as 
uh, the user, not even speaking about the overall development of the sector. So that is why, Katarina, I would like to pass the moderation floor to you, and I'm going to start with you here, just listening, trying to figure out uh, what is going on in the IT sector during this hour just long discussion. So I will pass the floor to you. Please let introduce your guests and tell us what you're going to be talking about. Yes, dear colleagues, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so yes, you know, like compared to our guests, um, I do not get that much uh, things about IT. As a journalist, I can ask some questions about the IT sector overall, and just for all of us to be able to figure it all out in a better way, because I do understand there's a lot of traumatic changes for all of the economy sectors. We have a lot of dramatic changes in Ukraine overall. And it would have been really weird and strange if the IT sector, even with all of the resilience that the IT sector had, even due to all of the mobility that the IT sector has, would have been influenced. And, and right now, what we what we're talking about how this sector feels itself in 2023, and we're going to be talking about that with Alexander Bornyakov. Uh, from the Ministry of Digital Transformation, the Deputy Minister, uh, with uh, Roman Prokofiev, the co-founder and the job search pl platform Jubal. Um, pleased to see you as well. We're going to um, have a close investigation of what is happening in out again, what's happening right now in the um, HR in IT. We're going to be talking to Olga Shapoval, who is the Executive Director of the Kharkiv IT Cluster. So hello. Yes, we know that's not all of the panelists in the same in the same window. When you know, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous if we have everyone present today. Also, we have. Yes, and I think that is all the people who have joined us. Ah, yes, and of course we have, we have. Uh, the, we have Stepan Mitish, the Vice President, the Head of IPAM Ukraine. Thank you very much for joining us today. I know that it has been really hard for you due to your scheduling. And uh, we're going to talk um, how the biggest companies, how, how the biggest companies right now are holding to their biggest clients as well. So, because I do understand that right now there is a lot of um, different and new approaches that you're using to do that. I think that I've uh, mentioned everyone who has joined us among the panelists. I hope that I haven't missed anyone. So, okay, Alexander, I think I would start with you because I knew for sure that, uh, you know, I know that all of our governmental institutions, they live the events first. So what should we have about the exports uh, of the IT services in 2023? And I would like to have a specific question about that. So we had um, that very slow decrease compared to the other sectors of the economy compared uh, to in 2022. But what we have seen that's overall, that's, we have seen that it's been due to the idea that the long-term contracts have been prolonged, the one that has been written even before the war. The situation in 2023 with the expectations of some of the companies, and I'm not going to say that that's the overall situation and it's all the same thoughts in the market, but people say that it might be worse. What do you see from the side of the ministry? Well, we have also seen the same thoughts that the situation might be hard, but I'm not going to say that this is um, a unified a unified vision for all of the people. Like some people saying that we are growing better, we are increasing value. Some people saying that we're losing some of the things. I think the situation was like that before the war as well. So we can't say that right now every everything is bad and everybody feel bad. I just wanted to decide that yes, there are some positive developments as well, but the situation is for sure hard. And one, what we have seen in a global understanding for the last year, even when, even with the ongoing war, um, before they have started shelling the energy infrastructure, we know that it hasn't been felt strongly by the IT, so we had a lot of positive developments in this case. Then the whole shelling of the energy infrastructure has started strongly, starting from October last year. And yes, we have seen that it has caused certain problems for the people who have lost their contracts. Right now, we know that the situation has 
got more sustainable so we're going we get now we're getting into the summer season and some of the some of the companies have been already ready to continue working autonomously even after summer so i do believe that we're going to have a plateau in this development well that that's what i think and i do believe that will all depend on the intensity of the overall military action so we keep on tracking the situation we're following the situation strongly if we will understand that we will be able to help at certain macro level not to, to a very specific company even though we had those cases as well and we have the company talking to us as well they've told us that we might lose the contracts please let us help us with some further things well what kind of in what way you have helped in what way you can help the companies who are in the risk of losing with booking for example because the people have said that like you know we're going to lose two or three people and that's going to be significantly impacting the desire of our of our clients to keep on working with us For example there was one of the things or we have helped other people for example with helping them to be evacuated temporarily or temporarily temporarily located for the need to, for example, meet their clients and to be represented at a certain event. This is something that also calmed people down. So we try to find a more systematic resolution for the situation. Because we had an idea and, for example, if we have this business trips arranged as well, so that the people, uh, that even even the people that haven't been booked, so for them to be able to live as well for the business trips, but they didn't find this uh, support for from the side of the social justice, let us say, so that one people are allowed, another are not. So right now this initiative has been postponed, but basically we're trying to find the best ways to support people and help people as much as we can. We're trying to get people to support them with the possible giving them more connections, with giving them, with helping them with electricity supply, helping them with um, different connectivity. We had those cases as well. So we're trying to help as much as we can, but in the same time, as the ministry, as the ministry, we are the policy makers in the way, and we're trying to get the feedback on what we can regulate systematically, of what we can do on the level of the legislation as well, so that the businesses could have the opportunity to work their way out as well. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the things that I wanted to ask you about as well, because the situation when every specific company can address the ministry and the ministry is going to work with a case of every specific company, you know, working with the professionals, I don't think that's a very effective way to work. So how can we establish the systematic solutions to those problems? Well, you know, in, in, in some times what we have seen as well that we're not able to respond to all of the uh, challenges and to all of the claims, inquiries, and one of the problems was as the law on booking, the one that has been changed, the one that has used to be the Soviet-like, and right now we have a certain procedures. Maybe some people are not aware of that, but there are certain criteria as well. There are seven criteria that you will have to meet, and these three criteria you can book up till 50% of your of your employees and then if you book then you can also can move so you don't have to address the custom service and border service you can book your people and then the enterprise can provide um, the order for the business trip and together with these documents or with the, the person can already cross the border with no problems with that this is a systematic solution the systematic solution that has been brought into power not that long ago and and we are trying to work on this direction. We're working with that and we're giving the people the opportunity to do that faster. In the market, people say that if you are in DS City, you can be booked. Uh, there are more chances to be booked than not if you're not included into that. Yes, that's one of the criteria actually of the critical need for the economy of the country. And so there are seven criteria that I've said that I've mentioned. So one of the criteria is to be the resident of the DSCT. Yes, there's one of the criteria, but you should meet at least two more. So that's not the only one. If, if the company is residing in DSCT, it doesn't mean that it makes you automatically uh, uh, eligible to go. It simplifies the life for the old company owners. Have, 
do you have more residents right now coming or no? For example, for the year 2022, the beginning of 2023. Uh, year 2022, I think there was, like, okay, today, so, you know, we have celebrated 500 companies that have joined DSET. Congratulations. Thank you. And basically, uh, we now say that half of those companies, they have joined, and even more, I think they have joined after the war has started. But right now we have more people uh, who are working on that, but you know, the industry has been working and the architecture has been working in a little bit a different way. Our architecture wasn't um, in a way that we could think that uh, those are the standards workers with a standard amount of the employees, but there are some certain processes that the company should take so to change the way the people are employed, and we understand that, that there are some certain challenges that you have to take as well. So it's not like we are saying that our residents have like a plus thousand additional companies in, 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 in DS City. It's just organic growth. Okay, I see that we have the questions in the chats, and I will for sure voice them out, but basically starting with uh, the other conversational questions. The IT associations has evaluated the overall amount of the booked professionals in the IT sector to the level of 10%. From that point of view, that was critically not enough. It's something that will not provide the resilience for the market. Have you calculated what is the number of professionals that have been booked right now? Maybe slightly more now, but I just wanted to also say a thing about that because, you know, one of the things that we have really helped with because we have worked with the people in every company and we have communicating about that as well. And I think that we had a titanic work on, on that because we have held contact with all of the companies and we have gathered thousands of people and we have, there's a lot of people that have been, been there. We have understood that some of the people didn't have all the needed documents. So there was a lot of work that has been conducted. So right now, the situation that we have, we do not understand it clearly in what way we can help because we have some people who have no documents at all. That documents that are needed that are needed for any kind of documents. So they don't have the military documents overall. So the people are basically out of nowhere. There's a lot of people like that. So we have the claims and demands from the companies to book this kind of people, but we cannot do that legislation wise. So we have to work on that, first of all, so that the people would have a clearer understanding that they need to do some things, and I should have done some things even before the full-scale invasion, but they can do some things right now. So we've talked to the associations and companies, so maybe we can discuss a more centralized solution for the booking, or maybe there will be like a company who has a thousand people, they can do that easier. And for example, every person is going to be doing that on their own and in the military office and, you know, asking them for some information. But yes, the situation is quite complex. And from what I think, this is something that that overall, this, that overall, that's at the level of, like, for example, like this level of uh, the problem for this sector is not that is the problem, for example, for the problem for, for example, for the agriculture sector is lower than in the IT sector and we do not understand what to do with those people. That's, that's kind of a natural. Okay, I just need to ask about those people in the air, let us say that, you know, from what we have heard from the market, that there's more and more companies, the companies that because you cannot book, for example, the private interpreter, the interpreter you can actually book your employee. So that is why a lot of um, people are now turning from the sole entrepreneurship to um, the contracts. That's a positive trend because we have been fighting for making it clearer with the market, especially in the salaries for many, many years already. But do what kind of expectations do you have on the fiscal recollections from the IT segments in 2024, 2023? Because a lot of people are going to switch from the private entrepreneurship position to 
the gig to the gig contracts. Well, you know, we projected that in a little way so that this the fiscal levels would be more or less the same with the GIG, with the gig contracts and with um, private entrepreneurship. So we actually really good about people moving for the gig contracts and for the official employment. And I think that is one of the important problems one of the important movements of that because they're also paying the military tax as well. The IT sector hasn't paid the military tax before. And if, for example, we're speaking about that, and I know that we had a lot of conversations about that before, that we're going to increase the tax because we're adding the military tax as well. So right now we are in a phase, in a strong phase of war, and I think that it's absolutely okay that if people are going to get to this employment phase when they're going to be paying additional 1.5% of their income for the military. But overall, the taxes are going to be more or less on the same level because there is no significant difference in that. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, we do have Anton Skripnik, the CEO of uh, the, the, the CEO of uh, the King Pine Geek companies and the investor of confounded of Vive Tech Angels, just for us not to get just an interview with Alexander because I have risks like that. So um, I wanted to invite other professionals as well. Olga, I would like to invite you to the discussion as well with the very same questions to start. As an IT cluster, how do you see that from your point of view with the bookings, with the switches, with the, the tax? It's not only the questions of the tasks and not only for the income tax and the the one that we have discussed before about the VAT payment, for example, but the overall, in general, what are your expectations for year 2023 in this segment? Uh, what are the key problems that you see right now as Kharkiv IT cluster? And what would be the ways how you can resolve it? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start with the expectations that we have. So we first of all, we're evaluating where the MBU data when we're talking about the trends and in year 2022, we didn't see the downfall. We have seen the increase and not a very strong increase, uh, of course, but it's not what the IT industry has used to in this last two years. We have had the increase of almost than 52%. But you understand that uh, the growth of 6% according to the NBO data, and I'm talking about the export income from all of the types of what the IT sector has been doing, of course, it has been uh, surprising for the sector. But if we're going to talk about the expectations for the year 2023, then of course, the 2023, speaking about the it's going to be harder than the year 2022, even though it might sound strange, but what is going to be preserved in the IT sector? First of all, the IT sector is about people. It's not about that much of the physical equipment or physical assets. It's about the people. It means that, first of all, we're talking about the physical potential that is evaluated in a different way. And right now, we're talking about more than three uh, th 300,000 people, motivated, highly motivated people, and we're going to talk why the motivation increases. Those people, they're going to be ready to produce the different solutions provided. If we will consider the idea that those solutions have been created for the developed countries, 90% of our research, they say, that has been created for the international clients. 60% is for the US markets. So I do understand that this potential is going to set some good optimism on how we can use that. But in the same time, we have some of the problems that we have to resolve as well. The first problem is the problem of the relocation and the problem of war. There is risks connected to that. But if we will speak that these people are really motivated, they are really motivated people, then this problem with the right way of communication from all of the parties it might be resolved, so it might be mitigated. The second problem is the problems of the instability, so starting with the blackouts and other problems. But what we have seen, why the expectation have raised, why the expectation have risen, we have gone through the winter. 
Yes, we have got to winter, we have got to spring. Well, yes, let us be honest. Let us be honest. All of the people have thought, like, there's a lot of things that might happen. Nobody knew what, what it would be. But it's not just the companies for the high key of IT cluster. We have calculated that we had uh, more than 300 IT resilience points we have opened. We have provided this many co workings with uh, Skylinks, with the generators. Um, the people continue to work. Whether they did it because someone told them to, no. They did it just because they needed and wanted to do that. And so there is the resilience in our resources as well. They can do that. But the problems, the problems with booking, the problems with the, for, the problem with the, also the forecastability of the sector. So it's not like about that as book, the IT sector lets the cultural workers go and, and go to war. No, that's not how we talk to the ministry when we are talking that we need a more or less transparent and sustainable mechanism that we really grateful to the Ministry of the Digital Transformation for working in this direction. But getting back to the question of the booking and booking for the small and medium companies, that is a very important question because there are half of our market and the opportunity to move abroad. So we are also supporting this issue that we, has, we have to discuss it separately than the booking because not all of the people can be booked the people that the people for example you cannot book the people who are in the high demand of the military professions and there are the same people who are our technical professionals well this is what we have you know our technical professionals are people who are the most demanded right now in the military sector as well so that is one of the problems that has to be highlighted as well if we cannot book them then we should at least have a transparent transparent mechanisms for living abroad. So, for example, that you could go for two or three weeks because you cannot, for example, go for a week to the U.S. But for us to have a transparent mechanism, for us to have a clear and un understandable mechanism, and so we can provide the office as well. And I do hope that with the overall collaboration with other participants of the market and the ministries, we will be able to get this story to the good, positive, finale. So I'm on one hand very positive about that, but on the other hand, I am very strict in the idea that we can do something and I'm sure that we can do something together. Yes, thank you. I wanted to invite Stepan and Anton for this discussion as well, because you are the specific representatives of them, of the sector. You are the people who know that clearly you get the understanding of the problems and how the problems can be resolved. Let us, and I'm going to have this question to you as well, and I'm going to ask you how the problems with booking and living abroad has also impacted you, but let us start with a different question. From what I know, EPAM has got to a very extraordinary step. The EPAC guarantees to the clients, I don't know everyone or not, so this is something that I've um, seen from the markets, the full money compensation if the contracts will not be completed. Yes, Katrina, thank you very much. I'm pleased to welcome all the colleagues as well. So there's a couple of comments that I wanted to add up to the previous question, and then we can also discuss the EPAM situation. Well, first of all, and that's very important, I think it was a very cool slide uh, by Dmitro when he was presenting the situation with the IT as well. And I just wanted to also have this, the top-down review with that, because the, what we see right now that this is the perfect storm that has been that what we that what we're having right now. The first thing is of course the full scale invasion and the war in Ukraine that unfortunately might take a longer time. And this is the first and important thing. And of course this is something that impacts the industry strongly. A second point is also the economical situation all over the world because the money are now also more expensive. The Federal Reserve in the US, they're not going to decrease the key rate. And as the Metro has said in a very good way, that when the COVID-19 has happened, everyone was really, really strongly afraid. Everyone was scared and every all of the people have thought that the life will stop the very next day. But what we have seen was completely different thing. What we have seen was the highest 
the highest need of digitalization. So that is why we have seen the growth even in 2020. We have seen a very strong decrease in 2021, and we have even seen the de decrease of the need for the services in 2022. But we can compare it to a very cool party, the party where you had a lot of alcohol, alcohol and food, but unfortunately, every party ends at some point of time. And you know, the people there, you don't want to party anymore. So right now in the global IT sector, that is what is happening right now. We have this hangover. When all of the businesses who should continue their digitalization due to the hype or due to the reality, due to the need that they had, they have already completed this digitalization. So right now, understanding that the money are very expensive, every client, every client they're going to be asking, what will be the turn return of investment? So right now, digitalizing for digitalizing sake, no one does it right now. And it's very important. We have to consider that as well, and we have to keep that in mind. Right now, there is a completely different economic reality that we're facing. And another point, and I know it's a slightly off top, and I know that uh, there are some problems, like Ghalib said that he has a problem with even becoming a user of technologies. But if we're talking about the artificial intelligence, so something that is right now happening with a chat GPT, with a GPT-4 engine. So this is basically the future that has already, that's already here. If you have already seen now the chat GPT, the chat GPT is actually uh, writes letter better than I do. So it's already writing the code even faster than even uh, a very good developer. So this perfect storm, this economical challenges that we're facing, the war and the artificial intelligence that comes into play as well. So this is a lots of challenges for the IT industry on the global level and of course for Ukraine as well. So that is why I do believe that it is a little bit naive to think or to expect that we're going to have some kind of a tremendous increase or any kind of increase as long as there is war in Ukraine. I'm not talking about those global things right now. Now, speaking about the EPAM directly, first of all, all of our contracts, all of our approaches to what we're continuing to do, this is a commercial secret. But what I will say, as a com as a big company that has is represented in 55 different countries all over the world, for us as business, it's slightly easier to diversify our risks. So we never had just Ukrainian projects or just Ukrainian teams. So we're working with the representatives of uh, different t companies from the S&P 500 team. So we have big teams uh, for 500 people. And so we have been working for the multi-regional companies and teams for many, many years already. So when the clients and, you know, clients of people as well, when they have started to also consider what is happening right now, they have seen all of the damage and the problems with the electricity, of course, they have been scared. They have been scared for their businesses, for the perspectives of the businesses, and we have offered them the mixed teams as well. So we might offer that, for example, there is a team in, in India, team in Ukraine, part of the team in India, part in the U.S., so that was easier to sell and to offer than, for example, a solely Ukrainian company that was only able, for example, to relocate people from Kharkiv to Lviv. So that's a little bit of different challenges that we have been working with and facing. So that is why, overall, what can I say? I do understand that the year is going to be really hard. That's for sure. Uh, even year 2024 might be really hard. And as long as there will be war, unfortunately, we will not be able to speak about the sustainable development of the IT industry. So we have to be realistic, even though I'm very optimistic, actually. So I do understand that the place we are in as industry and as businesses is way better positions that we could have imagined when the war has broke out. So the Ukrainians are unbreakable and uh, you, the IT businesses is anti-fragile and the clients would like to help Ukraine. They're proud of Ukrainians. They really would like to continue in, uh, doing business with Ukraine. That's very fashionable and trendy right now. But all of those challenges that I mentioned before, that unfortunately, they do not disappear due to that. And it's an important challenge for the industry and for the businesses overall. 
We have spoken about the layoffs, um, the layoffs on the global market and the global team. So do you, uh, do, do you assume there's be lay layoffs in the Ukrainian markets as well? Any kind of markets is very simple. So there is certain demand and certain offer. So if there's going to be decrease in the demand, and we have seen that even in the Mutra slide, that according to the information, so we have already seen that there is a decrease of the vacancies that have been offered. And there is one thing that is lacking as well. So there is no amount of the candidates for each of the positions if before that we had a lot of candidates and the candidates might have chosen, I'm not going to go there, I'm not going to be doing that. So there's better technology there, there's more interest in that. Now, right now, it's completely different. You have 10 candidates and one position. So there is, yes, there will be the layoffs. There will be the layoffs. We are not living in vacuum and in Ukraine, the situation is even harder than even average in the world. So yes, we should expect that. Yes, I would like to invite Roman to join our conversation as well, because for you, as the platform that sees the market, sees the candidates in real time, I do understand that there's a lot of things that you would like to add. So, Roman, your expectations, you know, okay, if not whether the market is going to get back to what it was, I think that is not a conversation for the next couple of years, but maybe you have a different vision on that. Yes, thank you for the question. I think I'm going to continue with what Stepan has said about the international contacts. We're working in 169 countries all over the world. So I think that one of the most important and the most interesting markets for us is the US market as well. And uh, because the, the US market is actually impacting everything what's going on in the world. So if we're going to be talking about the different markets, like the products companies, the resource companies that are in the IT market as well. If, we, for example, speaking about the outsource companies and the one that are a big part of the IT exports in Ukraine, then we see that their clients, most of their clients, there are the European companies as well. So what do we see right now in the American markets? We have seen that that what has started in the end of February, there has been the layoffs that we have heard about in the news. I do say, I do believe that it's just the beginning. We have seen that there is like just two digits per percent of the downfall of the uh, vacancies of, uh, offered in the US market. There is a strong decrease of budgets and engaging the professionals in the US market. And um, all of that, you know, you would say that is the US. Uh, you know, that's all that is all that is going to be reflected also in the Ukrainian outsource in the Ukrainian market. So what Stepan has said before, the money are expensive right now. So we had uh, the increase of the key rates and it's not recession yet. So the companies are expecting the recession to come, unfortunately, and everyone is getting ready of whether we will come or not, but everyone is waiting for that. Everyone is waiting for the bad times to come. And if you are really good about your budget, then you're going to consider where you're going to spend it for and what you're not going to spend it for. So we see a lot of changes in the market itself, in the HR market, in the hiring markets, and this very competitive market, there is already the change in the market for the job seekers. And you know, it's and you, the Ukrainian TV path hasn't felt it yet. I do remember year 2008 when there was the the crisis, the financial crisis, and then the dot com crisis in the US, like the months has passed and there was no response in Ukraine. And all of the professionals, they said that, oh, Ukraine is. Ukraine is not that integrated into the into the international market, but we know what happened next. So for right now, I do believe that we see the see the sign in the U.S. There's a lot of changes happening already. So right now we have some times where we still the contracts, why the people are going to just watching what to do, and this is the big spot, the big international context that we have to consider as well, and that will negatively impact Ukraine as well. And if we're talking about the war, then this is something that is not going to help engage the clients if we're talking about the outsource. It's definitely not going to get anyone. So the outsource for the product companies, we have the people all over the world and we have a lot of support from other countries and from other people. And when 
when people ask you what kind of company they would like to work, then the questions of the risk that my employer might disappear, that's a very important risk for the people. And what we feel that we, when we're hiring people, when the, the most recent way of actually saying that, sorry, you're from Ukraine and we're really worried of what might happen with you during this project. And this is the reality that we have to face. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, but then again, uh, then can, like, can, can we, can we, for example, provide some kind of a forecast for year 2023? The amounts of the candidates for for a position, averagely, or well, you know, the HR markets, it's actually, it's very dependable on the overall economical situation. If, for example, we'll have enough orders, then the market will be there. If no, then no, the forecast is really hard to say. If the forecast is really negative, and Olga has said that as well already, and I expect that year 2023 is going to be harder than 2022, because in 2022, we had the long term contract. So right now, the companies, when they're choosing whom to work with, they're going to be considering a lot of risks and a lot more risks and for example if before the blackouts before the 10th of october before the the big blackouts uh, the companies have been delivering the 100 percent of results i mean we don't have these problems right now but that's but that is something that we have already known now you know those two or three months people will always consider this risks because they know that what's going to happen if that will go into continue they're going to consider that as well what about the positive developments so we have the positive development yes we do have the positive developments as well the it market is different and i'm always speaking about the outsource for example um we're working with the product companies but if we're talking about the products and you know i cannot speak speak on behalf of all of the markets, but speaking about the median over all of the growth of the big product companies, the one has been targeting to the outsource as well. So they have the growth of up from, from 30 to 40% and or in the average. You know, we are we're not that much dependent on the specific orders so this there might be the small b2b or the smaller b2c product and all of these product companies are continuing their growth in this this year because there are some certain opportunities if you have a good product and good marketing strategy you can continue doing what it is you've been doing before and you can continue in increasing the values and exports that you have generated. So the same problems, the problems that have already been discussed, that yes, the mobilization, yes, there is a problem that your key people might be mobilized. And of course, there, there might be the problems with opportunity to move abroad, to, to, to have the business trips. Because if you are the product IT company, you have to be integrated into the international IT community. You have to talk to people in the conferences. You have to hire people people abroad, you have to talk to them personally. You can't do that. It's going to be the big barrier for your father on development. But it's also this is the team breaker that is going to break it all. Well, that's very interesting. Throughout these two years of COVID, everyone has said that Zoom is going to going to substitute all of it. The online communication is going to substitute everything. We can have businesses sitting in your home when the when the when the when the planes do not when the planes do not go. So even now, the planes we have the planes more or less available, uh, but everything is not that hard. Okay, Anton, I would like to invite you to the discussion. You know, we are talking as everything is going to be bad, but can you support this trend or can you maybe uh, refuse this trend? So we have, are we in the singularity point already? No, not yet. Not yet. Um, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, not yet. Now, you know, our drones cannot, uh, you know, uh, cannot uh, automatically destroy our enemies that still need our confirmation as well. So yes, so I'm very positive about the current development of the situation because on the 24th, when all of the companies we have understood that our our main KPI is going to be uh, the overall level of how much money we can earn and how much money we can spend for the military support. In our company, we have spent $7.4 million for the military for support of the armed forces of Ukraine in different ways, in different funds and direct support as well. And 
On one hand, it's hard to disagree with the current situation of the IT market. I do agree with the idea of the IGL storm that we have. And we have different companies in our in our team. So we have the product companies, the service, we have the big the big outsource and service companies. So there's different situation for all of our companies and all of our businesses. I think the easiest way right now that would be to for the boutique companies, the one that are focused for the specific industries, for the specific locations, I think that is the companies you have this period, the easiest way you have shown the growth as well, because, uh, for example, that the strongest in their niche, um, you know, being a part of the niche is uh, very helpful. The second position would be on what is happening right now, uh, there will be the companies that have turned to global outreach in the, in the fast pace. Because it's it's clear that you diversify your risks and uh, you can, for example, add uh, some of the portfolio of your company to those locations that you need, or for example, hire the recruiting agency and you can hire a 50 or 100 people for the specific projects to work with you. But um, as for me, there was a question also whether it's it's important for everyone. You know, like it doesn't really, the people are not interested in whether they whether the flow will fall or no that doesn't really that doesn't really matter actually because you know we are working with in it like in different companies that have different structure but in our main businesses we have come up to the solution that all of our profits for 100 percent we're going to be donating for example for improving the opportunity for the military protection of ukraine so we keep on moving with this with this course for the longer time right now so you know we want to give more but you need to earn more to do that yes yes you need to earn more to do that that's for sure honestly that's very cool that the COVID-19 has helped us because you know that was there and it really helped us to to work on that so there was kind of an exercise for everyone so we got from a negative to positive development and the one thing that I've also was interested in bothered for, and it might even sound strange, but I was really uh, a little bit worried on year 2021. In year 2021, even though we have shown a good growth and we have had a very good result overall, and the average salary has grown by 40%. And it wasn't really harmonious, you know, that was really fast because of the postponed um, demand. And at certain moments, the freezing, we had a lot of frozen projects at certain moments of time. I'm really happy when our people earn more, when everyone earns more. And that's really, really cool. But it's very, very cool when it's balanced with the reality. But the reality of 2021, that was at some moments that that you didn't really care of where to hire a person I hire the person in london or or in Lviv. so you know you didn't care that much the differences in salaries as well and there was something that was really bothering that was really bothering due to the profitability models as well because some of the profitability models can help you to deal with that but Speaking on the market overall and the adequacy of the market, that was a lot of questions about that. I think it's slightly better right now. No, the market is calmer. Well, well, we we can we can find some good candidates. We can find some good candidates in the market right now. So you might not find a, a junior who has just one year of experience with three point five thousand salary, but you might find a good. Um, you can find a middle developer or senior developer with a good experience with a good motivation with the same money but the biggest challenge it's not the domestic challenge or that's not about the opportunity to leave or the opportunity to book people i think that the biggest challenge is the external challenge is is the the invasion so that would be in we would have more projects in this ideal storm if not that and I outlined this as a challenge that we cannot control. The Ministry of Digital Transformation, they're very good. They're taking a lot of steps. They're really supporting the army. They're 
supporting their lot of initiatives and donations for the IT industries for sure. But you know, we're not living in a vacuum. So we're not, we have to go, we have to work with the same rules and we have to go to war, we have to go to war. And we're continuing paying the salaries for the money who go to war. And I think most of the people who are here in this discussion, they're also doing that. So we have the three different programs of how we are supporting the army. One of these programs have been developed for the uh, our employees who are now in the military. But yes, we will have the layoffs. That's that's that. No one is safe for that. Even for those companies that did not have any kind of changes in in the year 2022. So we understand that in 2023 you will not be able to do that. So you will have to introduce certain certain leverages, certain layoffs as well, and you will have to do certain things due to the martial law situation, not unlike that you would do that in the peaceful times. It would be very good if we would have the opportunity to go for abroad, not only for our industry, but for a lot of people as well. Whether it's critical, I think that in our case, maybe no, because, you know, I can travel as a father of three kids, and that's something that really helps to sell your services. And this is, yes, this is very helpful. If we would have the official procedure, for example, for the confirmation for everyone and to plan your business trip, that will be definitely positive and play impacting our economy. And it's really, and it's really pity that it has been stopped. All of the other things we cannot control, um, the bookings, um, again, the, the internal bookings, you know, there's a two psychological directions in our company. First of all, you know, uh, do not show me up. I don't want the people to know that I'm here. So you know, people people do not want to be booked. At least, you know, it, from the experience of our company, there are some people who didn't want to be booked. So, okay, some social connections of what people will think of me. Or what do you mean by that? No. No, it's not about that. So, you know, people understand that, you know, some people, okay, the people who have already effective on the front line, they're already there. And um, I have a lot of respect towards these people who have went to war. And, you know, in our company, we also have a lot of people like that who went to war right now. But there's also some people who, has, who will be useless there. You know, and, and you know, when you're officially employed, uh, when you have this gig contract, so you have to provide all of the employees that you have. And there's a lot of people, they do not have the desire to be a part of it and to be uh, to be provided to that. Because we're talking about the booking for six months and no one knows what's going to happen in six months. And they don't know how you're going to use this data later on. So people, they... We have these two big trends. We have people who would like to be booked, and uh, there are some people who do not want to be booked and, you know, who don't want to be considered for the booking as well. I don't know, is it the same for the other companies or is it just the same for us? The very same, the very same, just like what you've said, the very same situation for us. Yes, yeah, so as, as, as the end, you know, just to sum up, so that is to have the profits, it's good because the more profit we have, uh, the more donations we're going to have, the faster the victory is going to come. But it's not the psychological main factor for us to do something. We need to have the opportunity to move for the people and for the for the executives, for the salespeople. And I know that it's needed not only by the IT industry, but uh, for the people who are working with some kind of industrial design, for them to be able to find the partners and the suppliers abroad as well. And this is something that is needed. That's an important program for the economical sustainability and resilience of Ukraine. All the other things, we'll keep on working on that as well. Yes, thank you very much. So, by the way, you've spoken that you are the father of three kids and, you know, Alexander, if you're still with us. So, you know, that would be a very good uh, campaign from the Ministry of Policy, of uh, Ministry of Policy and the Ministry of Social. That would be also a nice campaign if you're an IT person. If you're working in IT and you have three kids, then this is a good for the, for both the dem demographical situation and for the IT. So, okay, there's a lot of conversations about um, the overall military attack and we're only talking about the military technologies and drones, what would be the potential for the development of the military tech for our, for our IT sector right now? Because I know a lot of small companies, small product companies, 
that have considered now creating the products for the front line and creating this as the mainstream. Whether it's going to be profitable, that's up to be seen. I think no one knows, but what is it? That's a big market. That is a very big market. The multi-billion markets that when you require the technological solution for that, when the good and smart people are needed, and we need a lot of machinery, we need a lot of robot technologies, the AI, a lot, a lot of stuff that can be included. There's a huge, huge market that grows. And if you have expertise in that, and you know, we have the Czech Republic here, we have Excalibur and the Polish companies, the UK, the UK has 40,000 companies that are working in the military tech. So there's 40,000 companies, you know, and there's a, a small city in, in, in the UK that actually makes planes. So there's a lot of things. The whole city, the whole city is dedicated to the production of the planes. And really, really bad that we basically only have 150 companies, even if we're going to be including the small enterprises, that we only have that people who can do that for a good. We need to have 20,000 companies who will be able to do that good. So this is a real market that is going to have a really big demand in Europe, and especially in Europe, there's going to be a big demand on that. In the countries of I've, I've been in, in, in the Eastern countries, in the Middle East, I have been to an exhibition in Abu Dhabi, and there has been, I, I, will, I was shocked how huge this market is. You know, I have never thought about this as a possibility, possibility and opportunity, but it is a big opportunity as well. Okay, colleagues, would like to listen your points of view for all of this, because yes, a lot of people have said that the military attack is a very good idea for all of us right now. You know, even when the war has started, I do remember that we've had we've had the amount that we had a whole number of the conversations with the IT companies, and we've said that it's going to be the moment, especially for the big com for the small companies. And I know that EPAM has diversifications and other com and other things, but if there will be the companies that if they're not going to be starting to have their own IT products, then they might die. They might be out of the market. And uh, by the way, yes, we at that point we have said that strategically we see that and we need to generate more startups and as a ministry we're going to do everything that is in our power so we will have more product uh, based companies. So and I know that Anton's company they have their own product. They have their own product and they also have Yes, and they also have a service-based company as well. So we had said at that point of time that it has to be our strategic priority. Then it turned out that that was in the first months, and we have understood that as God, this war is going to take a longer period of time. And the military attack we have been dealing as the ministry already, and I can give you a little bit of preview for the secret, but this is a lot of things that Mikhailo Fedorev is doing right now. And a lot of people from our team, they have been also providing the support that is needed. And by the way, thank you very much for your support uh, for what Anton has said. So we had this drone army, we had some other projects as well, and um, I might not speak of those projects right now, but we're definitely going to give you an update on the platform that is going to unite that's going to unite uh, the people who are working in this defense tech industry and we're going to have more people who's going to be working there and if you would like to do something for our victory we're going to try to do our best to provide you all of the supports possible and to provide you the financial need and everything that is needed for you as well so all of these ideas and all of the projects that can get us closer to victory that should not be avoided and should be supported and this is the main idea from this platform that we're about to introduce about about to present we're going to finalize some of the ideas and 
We have been working on this idea for certain, for a certain amount of time already, and we wanted to say that, you know, drones is a hot topic, but there are hundreds of other ideas that have already been analyzed. And the southern idea through you, but not through the Ministry of Defense yet. No, through all of this, through all of this analysis, they have talked to, you know, they have consulted with all of the people and then Later on, they have they have contacted all of the people and some of and they have been contacting a lot of people in the best ways. So the process has already been introduced and has been started already. And maybe that's not yet that systematic, but that's already there. And also, I wanted to add up just personally saying that we might be the country that will has the best and the coolest defense stack in the world. And I have been talking to my friend uh, who has been working in the defense and military topics even before the full-scale war, and he will have talked about that. And he told me that that he, he remembers the times when at each of the conferences or trade shows when the Israelis have shown their product, everybody wanted to buy it because it comes from Israel. And now Israel, Israel was at some point in time the quality trademark, and I do believe that this is the future that we're going to be working as well. And I think that all of the products, you know, choosing the Ukrainian defense product is going to be the, the, the quality sign as well and for the next 10, 15 years. Our main task right now is to unite all of the people who are doing something in these directions and we're going to work on this in systematic approach as well. And the next point that when the war ends, we just need to make sure that all of our companies will have the maximum of opportunities. It's not just we're going to be working on this part of the industry that we can earn as a country. I do believe that we can earn a lot as a country on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very cool. Very optimistic, dear colleagues. Yes, I would want to agree to what Alexander has said and what Anton has said. I would like to say the following, and I wanted to maybe divide it into two stages. The first stage, we need to help our country to win, and it's not a question at all. But in the same time, as Anton and Alexander has said as well, we, while doing this, we would have the expertise that we need. And then we would have the big markets, the big made in Ukraine market, and made in Ukraine would mean actually the good quality that we can offer. What I want to say that what Alexander has said is very important because we have a lot of volunteers and a lot of volunteers from our company as well. They have been contributing to the different systems and contributing different systems that help us to protect and defend the country. Even uh, recently, throughout uh, February and March, we have had a hackathon. We have engaged the ministries and different services in, from, the, from all over the Ukraine and in, in, actually included the ministries as well. But what I have seen as a person that's on the level of the states, what we need, we need um, the kind of institutions who would outline the priorities, outline the priorities and unite the businesses. Because right now we see that from the different sides and different businesses are coming and they're saying that we can help you here, we can help you here, but we don't have some things that are all together that, you know, we will combine everyone. And there are some certain initiatives from us, from our company that we have already seen that, for example, we want to know how we can combine it and starting not only just from the donations. But, you know, I will be definitely looking forward of learning more about the initiative that has been forecasted and has been already promoted by the ministry because there's a lot of desire to join, to join all of these initiatives. First of all, to help our country win. Olga, would you add up something? Well, you know, if just, you know, just to sum up to what my colleagues have already said. Uh, so first of all, I would like to support what Danton has said. So this is a huge opportunity that we currently have. And, but we have to consider that as well. We need to make a little step back if we will consider the industry right now. Yes, for some people that would be, uh, 
a way back for somebody in the minutes because you know the industry is not made of the people for example who are creating the defense tech abroad so that is in a different way so you know it's like a hospital so you cannot just turn it from a dental hospital you cannot already start this uh, surgery office you know because there are the doctors they can do that but that's the different doctors the same with the developers there will be the different developers this kind of uh, diversity can be also diversification can be a challenge for the people as well some people have developed themselves and our industry has grown due to the people who have created the different solutions they have consulted they have created the products they were the part of the competitive advantage for the clients and when you are the part of competitive advantage of course the recession is going to impact the market but the people who have got into the market that will be influenced by that less we have seen that in 2020 we have seen that increase of 40 and 50 percent and that we have seen the new contracts coming as well so it's not just a question of who owns the ip that's a question of the value added of what you're doing as well and if we were getting back to the company then if we have the people who can then uh, divert themselves that will be very good and there will be a great opportunity for them it will be very cool if we'll have this platform coming right now and from our side uh, we really have a lot of uh, pets projects that we have in our company and some of them have already had the received the international financial support because we've had the international um, owners as well if they haven't invested into the fintech before they now see this opportunity but what we're talking about the defense tech what it is it's about combining the technology with the production i have the production background and i know that the production is culture first of all culture it's a culture of for example creation well you have the business development you have creativity and you have the approach that is called the lean approach when we are very specific about what we're doing and analyzing specifically what we're doing i think that this is going to be all of the three components that are going to be impacting of whether we will be able for example to on the level of the people who are doing something to add up this biz dev component because the biz dev we, we're doing the technology goods but the business development is not is lagging behind so there's kind of our gross zone um whether we're going to have this moment and whether we will be able for example by joining our efforts in the platforms that alexander has mentioned as well whether we will be able to do something that St Stefan was talking about just for us to be able to understand what is that that we have to do let us share this information with one another let us consider how it's been done in the world because the production the production and especially when we're talking about um the defense stack so that's a lot of details you know i really enjoyed this previous webinar because we had a webinar on the ministry of defense and all of those military questions that have been discussed before and what i really like that all of the people have been talking about the land lease that that has been in the second world war but no one is that except for this land lease we had at least 40 plants that have been provided to us as well for the soviet union at that moment and that was the moment that has been significant not just the physical support but the technological solutions that given us the opportunity to start the production because the defense tech is going to require a lot of investment and this investment in ukraine it has to be done in the places that the rockets can't reach we will not be able to build i don't know nicely and beautifully easy nice constructions because they will be devastated in the day too Yes, you know, on the missiles, and the missiles are just a fresh story. For example, we were forced to take down the, okay, not to take down publications. We didn't, we didn't do the publication in one of the product companies from this sector because uh, they there, there might be the, the, the target of the attack. We, we were asked not to write in articles about them. There are some risks. Okay, colleagues, we're out of time, actually, for the discussion. And, you know, it's a big pity for me because I see that we have the potential to talk for the two hours more. But, you know, they will not invite me uh, again if I'm going to uh, prolong our discussion for that kind of fun. I know that we have uh, 10 more minutes. I wanted to summarize with uh, the question, like, how many people were going to have joining the IT sector, understanding that there is a decrease 
in need and but i'm going to have this question for a different in a different event but i just wanted to summarize with a different question the it sector the it sector used to be we were talking about the scale process and the social process and different there was always a little bit aside a little bit aside it was always like you know don't don't I'm, I'm doing my job, so, you know, keep off me. But in the same time, the IT sector turns out to be one of the most effective participants of the resistance right now. We were talking about the technologies, donations, any kind of other participants as well. And as, for example, the people from the IT, they're joking about that, you know, on the 24th of February, everyone woke up with slightly different values and slightly different ideas as well. So I would like to ask you, all of you, just to give it just like a one sentence me answer. So how to preserve this potential after the war, the potential of this IT as community for the policy making, for the participation in the state life, for the interest for the political processes as well, because, you know, a lot of people had impact on the policy, the metallurgy, the, uh, the agriculture producers, but not the IT people, how to preserve this impact of the IT community for the processes of the state, for the processes inside of the state. Right now, there is a strong impact, but how to continue that? Well, I think it's going to happen on its own because, you know, we're not going to, I think that we're not going to imagine our lives without the things that we already have. So, you know, I don't know how to answer that with just one sentence on there. Well, you can, you can use two. Okay, but, uh, you know, just to give you one sentence, you know, this is something that is going to happen whether we like it or not. I do believe that there is no other way. So there's going to be an impact from the IT sector. Well, yes, I do agree to what Alexander has said. You know, this is a, this is an inevitable change. This is something that has already happened. And, you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's IT sector impact or not IT sector impact. There's going to be the impact of the civil society, of the society and active citizens, because they already have this understanding that you care not only for your family and yourself, but you are care about the community and society around you. You are a part of a global society, a global community, and it's not relevant not only for the IT, that's relevant for all of the Ukrainians. You know, what I would say that the dialogue has been brought up and has started to build up because in the ministry we have a stakeholder that understands us and we understand the stakeholder as well. We're talking about the Ministry of Digital Transformation. And without that, all of our efforts have been have been damaged due to some corruption risks and 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 and, and thoughts and fears and it wasn't we were no one were interested to get into the sector and to work with that right now we have a productive dialogue we have people to talk to and we have people to talk what about we have people who will hear us the people who speak our language and the people who will answer in our language as well so all of those initiatives that take place they're taking place because we have people there the same thing as with businesses the same thing for the state people a number one factor. We have a cool team. We have a cool team that sets out the trends that does the right thing to do. Not to lose it. We're not going to lose it. I agree with Roman on that because we're building the new value circle. Values are about actions. Actions, the value goes with action. Through action, we're building the new values. So we are working on that with the actions that we take. You know, physically, we will not be able to get to those ideas that, you know, I it's just me who matters you know we're not going to get to that even if we're going to be speaking about our company that have been socially active all the time and you know our social responsibility programs that have been one of the values that has been an important basic value for us so you know i even now i understand that we are in the leveling up with that in a good sense i am and i do understand that in a, in a good sense right now, we are just, you know, like kind of extremely fucked up company in doing that. So, you know, we're going to get to the survival recipe with that. Yeah. So 
just just to get back to this first thought i think that we're really really lucky that we now have the ministry of digital transformation because we have people to talk to and then as an institution as the body who can coordinate all of those resources all of all of those efforts and as stefan has said we need coordination we need to get everyone all of the positively motivated people and just tell them that we can give you a hundred people and just you know give us give us this opportunity to work we're ready to do that Okay, thank you, Stepan. Olga? Yes, I would agree to everything that has been said, and I do fully agree with the idea that we really needed the Ministry of Digital Transformation. We haven't mentioned DSCT, but I do believe that it's kind of it's kind of very important so to help us to develop the IT industry to uh, keep on working on this development. If we're going to speak broader or think broader, you know, I cannot imagine the future of humankind without the IT technologies because, you know, it's everywhere and it's going to just broaden its impact. In the same time, I cannot imagine the successful future of Ukraine without the digitalization and IT. That's it's actually inevitable process right now. And just to finalize it, I just want it to be this, you know, good cop uh, to to the backup that was in the beginning. You know, the war will come to an end. Any kind of economical crisis will come to an end as well. So that is why right now we should be prepared. We should be prepared that we go with us. We're going to have this bounce back happening. When it's going to happen, we don't know. Maybe in a year, maybe in a two or three. But we have to get prepared to this bounce back as well. And we have to teach the new professionals. We need to help the other people to adapt, the veterans that are going to come back from the, from the war. We need to help them to adapt and to create the new positions after the war. So I am sure that what is coming, that's going to be the good and successful future. The question why, and no one can answer this, but let us continue to productively work with one another, to continue and stay in resilient nation, resilient industry. And yes, I believe that everything's going to be okay. Okay, thank you, Olga. So we're going to build up the agenda balance so you will have the final remarks. Well, okay, let me just start with like very briefly. First of all, I really wanted to support everything that has been said by my colleagues and just wanted to add up a couple of things. You know, the maturity of the industry has increased and, you know, we understand that the maturity of the industries has also influenced the maturity of the society. And, you know, this triangle of the you know, business society and the state, they need to be working all together and this is something that works. And I agree to my colleagues, this is going to be happening more. What else has happened? This maturity has also got to this idea that we have this institutionalization in place. So we started to have this responsibility on our own. And we started to do that on the company's level and on creating the groups as well, because sharing was also an important tool. So when the companies, they already have this responsibility, when they're creating the certain institutions that are starting to impact, that gives us what? That also, we've already known that you have to go to the politics, you have to create a political party, then you'll be able to do something like this. But no, there is another thing. Maybe there's an analog of a deep state when we have the civil society, when we have the impact that not a single political party has. There's no political party from the IT sector, but altogether we have a better impact altogether, even if we had a political party of five or six or seven political parties like that. What should we do? continue the dialogue, continue our joint action, not just to advise what should we do in the Ministry of Digital Transformation, but keep on working together and to keep on getting ready for the better times to come. Yes, the better times shall come unexpected as we know it from now on. Yes, dear colleagues, thank you very much for the discussion. I think that the discussion was very good. I am really, really sorry that we didn't have a lot of time. So the one thing that I might offer you as well, you know, as a media platform, we're always open for 
any kind of ideas, commands, ops, ads that you might have, if you will have the desire just to talk to us, we're always ready. So you can also write for a dispatch and uh, we will be broadcasting that. Thank you very much for this conversation. Have a very nice evening. Thank you for the invitation. Glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes. Thank you.